On January 2nd, 1935, a man identifying himself as Roland T. Owen checked into the Hotel President in Kansas City, Missouri, paying for one night. Hotel staff noted that he appeared to be in his early 20s, had a scar in his temple, and a cauliflower ear. Bellhop Randall Probst accompanied Owen to room 1046, where he unpacked a hairbrush, comb, and toothpaste. He did not appear to have any other belongings with him. Shortly after his check-in, maid Mary Soapdick entered the room to clean and was surprised to find Owen sitting alone in the dark with shades drawn and only one dim light illuminating the room. Owen permitted her to clean the room, but asked that she leave the door unlocked when she left, stating that he was expecting friends in a few minutes. She did as she was asked, but returned to the room again around 4 p.m. with fresh towels. She again found Owen in the dark, this time fully clothed, lying in bed with a note on the bedside table that read, Dawn, I will be back in 15 minutes. Wait. The next morning, January 3rd, Mary Soptic returned again, this time finding the room locked from the outside. Assuming that this meant Owen was out, she entered the room to clean, but again found him sitting in the dark as he was on the previous afternoon. While she was in the room, he answered a phone call saying, No, Don, I don't want to eat. I am not hungry. I just had breakfast. No, I am not hungry. She returned again at 4 p.m. with towels and heard two men talking inside the room. She knocked and was answered by a deep voice, unlike Owen's. When she stated that she had brought some towels for the room, the voice answered, We don't need any. That night, there were complaints of loud and profane men and women talking in the vicinity of room 1046. Additionally, outside the hotel, Robert Lane was flagged down in his car by a person with a deep scratch on his arm, whom he later identified as Owen. At 7 a.m. the next morning, January 4th, switchboard operator Della Ferguson noticed that the phone in room 1046 was off the hook, preventing her from making the requested wake-up call to the room. She instead sent Probst, the bellhop from days earlier, to the room. He knocked several times, ignoring the Do Not Disturb sign on the door handle, before a voice told him to enter and turn on the light. But the door was locked, so Propes just shouted, Hang up the phone, and left. Assuming that Owen was drunk, hotel staff left him alone until 8.30 a.m., when they again noticed that the phone had not yet been hung up. This time, bellhop Harold Pike went to the room with a key and entered to find Owen on the bed naked and apparently drunk as they had presumed. Pike noted that there were some dark spots on the bedding, but did not turn on the light to investigate further. He simply hung up the telephone and left the room. At 10.30 a.m., another operator noticed that room 1046's phone was again off the hook, and again sent Probst up to check on Owen. When no one answered the door, Probst entered the room to find Owen on his knees and elbows, just two feet inside the door. There was blood on the walls and ceiling of the main room and bathroom, as well as covering the bed. Owen had been bound with a cord around his neck, wrists, and ankles, had been strangled, stabbed in the chest, and his skull had been fractured. When asked who bound him with the cords, Owen said, nobody. And when asked how he sustained his injuries, he stated that he had fallen and hit his head on the bathtub. Soon after, he lost consciousness and was taken to the hospital where he died shortly after midnight. This story would be strange enough if it ended here, but it continues on to include letters sent to his mother after death, anonymous payments to cover his funeral expenses, and the discovery that Roland T. Owen was actually just an alias of Artemis Ogletree, a 17-year-old who left home to hitchhike California a year before the events in room 1046. There are others who have delved deeper into the case in an attempt to answer the many questions that arise. Who killed Artemis Ogletree and why? Who paid for his funeral? Who sent the posthumous letters to his mother? And who was Artemis's friend, Dawn? Many theories attempt to answer all these questions, but for now, and perhaps forever, the answers will remain a mystery. If you'd like to learn more about the murder in room 1046 and other mysteries, I've included links below to videos and other resources. And if you like what I'm doing here and want to support me, please like, subscribe, and share on your social platform of choice. I post new videos daily about mysteries, cryptids, aliens, and all things strange to kick off your day. See you tomorrow.